Hey everyone, Castle here, about to explain some stuff. So, um, as of last night's video, I'm going over uh, feedback on that, and I'm going to give my thoughts, and just talk a little bit more about the, the situation and everything like that. Also, keep in mind, I'm not missing any meals or anything like that. This isn't, like, this isn't going to be putting me in a super duper bad spot, but it is, it is one of those times where I have to actually sit back and go, I need to be weighing my options and be, uh, maybe changing my strategy a little bit which is not really that big of a deal. It's actually a good thing um, for a lot of reasons. Well, anyway, so uh, before I go too much into that, hold on a second. Uh, um, let me spend a moment to uh, talk about uh, what I'm cur currently patching into Revulsion right now. So as of last night, last night, I learned that there's a bug in the random generator that doesn't show up in the editor. It only shows up in game. And what happens is every once in a while, it kind of it's kind of rare, it just sort of happens. Under very specific circumstances, two doors will spawn in the same spot and one of them will be locked and the other one will open, will be able to open. But I've never seen it in the editor. In fact, I played through 12 floors of the random dungeon in the editor. Nothing. Nothing. I played one... I, 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 I load the game up in, in uh, the regular, you know, the regular build of the game that's up on Steam. And I play for just a tiny bit. And then, boom, like the first, the first uh, a random dungeon that I, I, I went into, it happened. But then I couldn't get it to happen again. So... It doesn't seem to happen in inside of the editor. It only seems to happen inside of the game. So I am sorry to everyone when I said that the you know I didn't think the bug existed. I it does. It does exist. It very much fucking exists. And I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> very frustrating. Very frustrating. I mean, I never actually came out and outright said that. I, I just said that I didn't think it existed because you know it could, the maps can be kind of confusing. No, it it, it exists. You see, the, you, basically the way you know what's happening is is the doors look like they're doubled up. So there's like Z fighting on the door. That means that two doors spawn there. So I already have a fix um, in place. And uh, I also made it so that in the random dungeon uh, generator, uh, the entire map is visible at all times. So right away you can look at the map and see what you're getting yourself into and you can kind of um get an idea of what you know you generally speaking like i, I remember uh you know the way it cur currently works in the build that's up there right now you know if you're watching this video before i upload the, the next version which i'm probably going to upload the next version tonight it would uh it, you know as you entered the area it would appear on the map but uh as of right now the whole map is just visible right from the start which is a little bit more which is more consistent with the rest of the game anyway so might as well just kind of go that way. So just in case there's situations where somebody thinks that that's the case where they've run into the bug but they really haven't, just in case, uh, this should help with that. But at the same time, it is entirely possible that two doors can uh, spawn on top of each other. So uh, what I do now is I run a, I run a very brief check, well, maybe like once every 10 or 20 seconds, um, to see if there are doors that are doubled up. And if I find one that's doubled up, I, uh, I, you know, I, uh, I, I, I delete one of them or uh, unlock both of them or something like that, right? So we'll have to see how that goes. I'll be testing it and everything like that. Uh, maybe it's worth actually putting up. So even in the situation where I'm not working officially on Revulsion anymore, um, you know, I'm still going to be putting out bug fixes and stuff like that because I have to. But I'm actually going to go a lot more into this right now anyway. Okay, so going back to the whole entire uh, aspect of like doing like really big content patches and everything like that for Revulsion. Um, there's some feedback I got here. Well, the reason sales are low is because most people are not aware of the game. Probably true. I mean, I mean, it's probably definitely true. Because of the feel that changes, additions to Revulsion aren't going to uh, aren't aren't worth doing unless you think they have a decent chance of getting more attention. The only thing I could think of that could do that would be a graphical overhaul, but even then, it's no guarantee. Graphical overhaul, you know, like anything that would require an overhaul at this point would 
it would be better that I worked on another game. See, if I had five, four or five games that are performing roughly as well as Revulsion, then that would actually be pretty significant income. That wouldn't actually be that bad. That would actually be... And if I could do it once, I can, I'm sure I could do it multiple times. So at this, at, there's a certain point in time where it's like, okay, well, you know, is it is it more is it a better idea for me to continue just working on the same game, which I have actually been working on Revolution for way too long, and I kind of made that mistake. But in this case, though, since it was my first game, I kind of understand why. And like the the way Revolution plays right now, I feel is a lot better. The new death mechanic, the you know, the just the general flow of the game is a lot. It's a lot more loosey goosey. You know, you can kind of go into areas and you can play very loose. And a lot of like cool moments might happen where you're like near death, rather than the screen just flashing into black as soon as you take a little bit too much damage. You you actually have a chance to pull out your rocket launcher and shoot that one dude in the face and then recover your health and stuff like that. The game feels a lot more. Um, it, it feels a lot better now. But, you know, it still has all of its flaws. There's still some, you know, uh, minor issues here and there. It's just, it, I'm actually a lot happier with Revulsion at this point in time. Like, I, like I'm pretty happy with its current state. I don't know if going back and, like, reworking the entire game is a good idea. It would actually be better for me to start fresh with a new project and just continue on from there. Now I can have two games that are performing roughly the same, you know what I mean? Like, and then I can I can uh, go in a slightly different directions. Like, if the next game isn't just a straight up classic first person shooter and is more like a, a looter shooter combined with Seven Days to Die, combined with Borderlands, you know, Seven Days to Die combined with Borderlands or something like that, right? That is like a completely different mindset, right? And that to me would be really cool because. Outside of Subnautica, I haven't w really worked on a open world survival game, and it would be cool to actually make one where I had full control, full creative control over the entire project. Because I have a lot of ideas on how to make something like that really work and, and actually be really fun. Um, the only challenge at this point in time, though, is like figuring out how I'm, how I'm gonna do the. Uh, you know the the large the larger more open ended world, but I don't think that that's necessarily the problem because I'm also going with a fully multiplayer level editor, which means that it's possible that while you know I can I can have help while I'm working on one of these really big maps and figuring out how to instance off these different areas, and I have hierarchical instancing. I have a level editor right now that could do a hell of a lot more than a lot of people even fucking realize. <laughs> this thing's a beast, okay? Um, so, I all I need to do is just leverage that, and I can solve the, the most challenging problem with the issue. So, the world will be a lot more broken up, and, and rather than just being a big flat terrain, there's going to be, like, facilities that you could have to pass through or around, and there's going to be areas where there's just, like, mountains and, and like crevices and caves and stuff like that and it's not going to really just be something you can just hop on a vehicle and drive down a road all the way down to the, the destination um there's a lot more involved where there will probably be like fast travel nodes and and shit like that kind of like borderlands a little bit you know like well, with borderlands there are there are open areas and then there are there are tight air compact areas where you, you know you can pull out your shotgun and you can do a little bit better with up close and personal damage kind of you know stuff like that right Okay, so it makes a lot of sense that I would go in that direction. Um, Alley Cat here mentions that um, asking for help. I don't think anyone really wants to help me on this. I don't know. Um, I just, I, in fact, I, I don't know. I've actually, I've, I've, I've tried to tell people about Revulsion. I've tried to. It's kind of weird. It, it, if the game is a total underdog, like it. it you know, it, it one of the main impersonation, you know, impressions, not impersonations, impressions that the game gets, is that I wasn't expecting it to be like this. They were expecting something else, right? It's a, it's a good, it's a good FPS, like, but you know that usually the uh, the main impression is is that like they don't, you know, that they're like kind of surprised that it exists. Um, I don't know how to help with that. Like, I can't get anybody to to look at it. If I do, like, it, it gets uh, it doesn't really 
get like a you know a huge amount of praise. BZ Plasma hated on it the first time he looked at it, which means it's probably I don't know. It's fate's kind of sealed on this front. I don't think anyone's gonna I don't think anyone's gonna change their mind. Um, sell the IP to a publisher. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to buy it. Do ad hoc consultancy work. Uh, I don't even know how to do that. Um, improve the trailer significantly. This I could do. I was actually thinking that I just get a bunch of footage for the game and like a couple of like things that are broken up a little bit and then hand it off to like somebody on Fiverr or something like that and just have them make a fucking trailer. I was actually thinking about that and it would probably make a lot of sense. Make me a, a game trailer. <laughs> Maybe pay a couple of people to do it and put the best one up or something like that. Uh, press and PR, talk to the press. Press doesn't, I don't know if the press gives a crap. Honestly, there's a zillion games out there. I, you know, maybe I, I'm having like a bad attitude, like, um, in terms of like, you, you know, I got, I'm, I'm kind of acting already defeated. It's just, uh, I don't know. It just isn't, it doesn't feel right. Like, I'm not really good at talking to the press. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather drunkenly meet somebody in VR chat and like have a conversation there about it or something like that than, than actually have like a conversation where I have to pretend to be. <laughs> uh. We all want to see your smile on your face. Cringe. Allie, cringe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway. Um, so that's a vote for number two. And I took this one right here is kind of a vote for number two as well, at least sort of. Um, now, number two, so there was a two options. I actually i i went ahead and i made a build of revulsion that integrates integrates the um level editor into revulsion and then i realized how much effort it would actually take to get the level editor integrated into revulsion properly and i realized that it, this would this would take a couple of months to do it wouldn't just be as like a simple thing so I guess I wasted a lot of time. I don't think I actually wasted time. I still have the build. I went through everything. I did everything I needed to do. Um, but there's a lot of little things, a lot of a lot of stuff where for like for example, in the in the new in the new build, in the new level editor. Um, you know, Revolution 2 level editor right now. It's is Revolution 2 level editor. Uh, we know it's a new game now, though. But if you go into combat mode, it actually switches you into combat mode and the monsters spawn around you, right? Well, it's a multiplayer level editor, which would mean that I, I might as well just feature creep myself into making Revulsion 2, Revulsion 1, a multiplayer game. Do you understand, like, how much of a fucking massive change that would end up being? Just feature creeping myself into that. I can't do it. Now, here's the thing about this, though. I still need to be working on Revulsion because I still need the game to be in my peripheral. In order for what I think I need to do as an indie game developer to work correctly, I have to have what's called a long tail. This is not something that I've been working on because I've been focused on making one game and kind of hoping that the game would do better. But really, the reality is, is that you make a bunch of games that do kind of okay. And you have to have a lot of them. And, and you get a bunch of games that all perform roughly at about the same degree and kind of have the same, you know, um, style or sense or, you know what I mean? Not style, but like this, that same degree of uh, a profitability. Um, and then that's how you build yourself up. You, you don't just make one game. You, you, have to, you have to be willing to make a bunch of games. You know, I have to consider the idea that maybe I should have a small game here, a big game over here, a medium game over here, and then all of them uh, combined, I can then, uh, you know, that's when I'll start to actually um, being able to be more self-sufficient and everything like that, right? Having one game is, is actually a mistake. You shouldn't even, I don't even think you should plan around just having one game if you're an indie dev. It doesn't make sense to do it that way. Also... Lowering the price doesn't matter. That's another thing that I'm pretty sure of at this point in time. Like, it's one thing when, you know, people tell you, um, but you sell the game for 
or you know that's that's five dollars more than I was actually selling Revulsion for before. But then you do sales, and the sales put the game back up on the top, and then you do a patch for it every time the sales go live. So you bounce back and forth between three or four different games, and you do a small patch, a gameplay fixer, or something like that, and then as you keep going back and forth between all of these different games, you have a sale basically every month. Right, and each game ends up getting a little bit more attention because there's another sale, and basically that's how you do it. I think that's how it would work. You can't just be like, "Oh, I'm going to release one game," and if one of the game blows up, you know, then fine. If one of the games fails, then at least not all, not all of my eggs were on, in in one basket, right? I think that's it. The sales get the game on the front page again which gives it a chance to exist in front of the eyes of people. I can put the sale like a 50% sale and sell the game for roughly what it's selling right uh, for right now at full price. But it looks like, you know, it, it's it's at a 50% sale, right? Or something like that. And then um it's back up in everybody's eyes again. Oh wow, looks like a really good deal. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's how it works. I should, I should, if I was doing this correctly, I should have had that turn-based RPG, that hybrid multiplayer turn-based RPG already out. I should already have that game in a functional state, working and playable right now, and I should be working on my third game by now. If I was doing everything perfectly from the start, I should have been planning that out. Now, I'm kind of glad, I'm, I'm pretty glad actually that I did have a chance to sort of sit down in like, feel it all out when it comes to revulsion it's just that um i guess revulsion being my first experience is probably going to be the the, the game where i make the most mistakes but now i know how to how i think it should really work now i kind of have a strategy formed all right now I think I get it. Now I see the light. So, um, with all that said, what I'm going to do is possibly either tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to put out a small patch that addresses the one, you know, major bug. Because that's a major bug where a fucking, you know, the, um, the, the, the shit fucking, like, it, uh, you can't beat a, a random dungeon floor because, because it, two doors spawn on top of each other that shit needs to get eradicated i can't have a bug like that and i'm totally sorry to everybody who had to deal with that crap like i had no idea that it even like every time i kind of just assumed that every you know people were just running into being confused by the confusing mazes or whatever no no it's been going on for a really long time apparently five months um yeah apparently so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna i'm gonna uh Apologize for that and make sure that I get that shit fixed. Um, that's my highest priority right now. Once that's fixed, I'm going to begin going full out into development of the next game. And it's going to be open world survival. It's going to include a lot of the elements that I learned. It's still a first person shooter. It's still going to be a looter shooter, but it's going to be an open world survival looter shooter. That's what I want to make. I have a lot of ideas on how I want to do it. It's going to be, um, there's not going to be any zombies. <laughs> no zombies. A lot of uh, sci-fi. It's going to be very sci-fi. And there you go. Um... Sci-fi and an alien planet. Alien ruins and uh, human facility, human-made facilities and all kinds of crazy stuff. Sometimes you'll feel like you're playing a classic shooter because the, the way the combat will be a lot more, you know, numbers-based. There'll be a lot more stats. It'll be a lot like Borderlands sometimes. And then other times you'll be building your base with your friends and you'll be kind of, you know... Uh, Finding loot and and uh, gathering resources, food and water for humans. Gathering sunlight for your uh, robots, for your robot allies or whatever. 
Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end this video now. I um, hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for more. And I will have a patch out either tonight or tomorrow uh, regarding this bug. And if this bug, I would, I would really humbly request that anyone uh, test to see if the bug still exists. And if it does, then I will, uh, I will continue um, uh, figuring out how to fix it if it's still there. It's hard to actually get the bug to appear, though. So with that said, thank you guys, and see you tomorrow.